there. My name is Kelly Dale with Off the Beaded Path, and today is Monday, November the 16th, 2020. Hope you guys had a great weekend, and I hope you're ready to learn a brand new ornament just in time for the Christmas season. So, um, Helena Wayman reached out to me um, back at Christmas, at the end of Christmas season last year, and she had came up with an ornament that used a component that she learned from one of my videos. Videos. So she graciously offered for me to do a video on that. So that is what we're going to do today. So, it's, first of all, thank you, Helena, for that. And um, second of all, the pattern that I wrote is 12 pages. That pattern is completely free to you guys. And you can find that pattern at offthebeadedpathbeadstore.com. Simply go under step-by-step -step tutorials, and there is a category for free. And you will see that under the free category. But we are going to be making this Christmas night um, ornament today. So here's what you're gonna need to make the ornament. You're gonna need 93 millimeter bicones. So your three millimeter bicones are going to go here around each of your little circular oval components, whatever you wanna call them. So for this one and for what I'm gonna do today, I'm using the Crystal Double AB. You need 20 three millimeter fire polish beads. So your three millimeter fire polish beads are everywhere where you see the clear here, okay? And you see them here on the bottom. So you don't need a whole bunch of those, but you need 20. You also need 24 millimeter fire polish beads. So everywhere you see that pop of red, that is my four millimeter fire polish bead. You're gonna need four to five grams of a six millimeter bugle bead. So that's everywhere you see these little um, straight little beads there. They're gonna kind of be almost the star of the show on your ornament. So pick a color that you really enjoy working with because you're gonna be working with them for a while. You need eight grams of a size 11 seed bead. So everywhere you see that nickel color, that's my size 11 seed bead. Now I wrote the ornament using Toho brand seed beads. So if you use my Yuki brand seed beads, you may find that some of the counts you may need to change. I don't think you'll need to change anything, but just FYI on that. You're also going to need a size 12 beading needle. You're going to be going through several of uh, these beads several times, so you'll definitely want that size 12. You're going to need 9 to 10 yards of fire line. So what I'm going to be using today is I'm going to be using my 6-pound fire line. I definitely would not go up to an 8-pound. You could use a 4 or a 6, but do not go past the 6, because if you go past the 6, you're going to get really frustrated. The only other thing you're going to need is a standard size Christmas ball, okay? So you can, with it being almost Christmas, you can find these anywhere. You can find these at craft stores, big box stores, or you can probably go to Walgreens or CVS and find them. It's a 2.64 inch or a 6.7 centimeter um, ball. So just a standard size Christmas ball, it fits in my hand, okay? It's not a three inch, it's not a one inch, it's a 2.64, okay? I actually bought this black one. I bought a whole box of them at Hobby Lobby. They had shiny black and matte black. They had any color you could think of. Um, Helena did her original sample on a solid color ball. I did this sample on a solid color one. Um, and I think if you do it on a clear Christmas ball where you see through it, it will be fine. Um, I just think if you do it in a clear one, it's not going to look as good as it does on a solid ball. The solid Christmas ball is going to allow you to really let your beadwork be the star of the show and not so much the Christmas ball itself. So just be aware of that. So let's get started and let's get started making our awesome ornament. And guys, please understand that just because I'm saying it's a Christmas ornament, it doesn't mean that you can't take it and make it in beautiful blues for um, Hanukkah um, because almost this reminds me almost of a flame, a shape of a flame. So, you know, it would be a beautiful thing to put next to your menorah or something like that. Um, you know, if you did beautiful blues, you could also do um, colors for Kwanzaa and all sorts of things. So just because I'm calling it a Christmas ball doesn't mean you can't make it for the holiday that you, you celebrate and you support. So let's get started. 
Okay, so here is a more up close look at the ornament and what it's gonna look like finished. Basically how we construct this is we're gonna make five of these raining on prom night shapes here. We're gonna make five of those first. Once you have all five of those made, then we are going to make this top part and connect all of these. Then once that's done, we're gonna go and we're gonna make these pieces here, okay? So it's done basically in three distinctive sets. So to get started today, I'm using a size 11 Toho Pepper Red and a three millimeter double AB bicone. I've got my needle threaded with two yards of thread. And on my beginning strip here, I have 28 size 11 seed beads. Now I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna double count those while we're here. So we've got two, four, six, eight, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, 20, 22, 24, 26, and 28. So I have 28 beads to start with. So I'm going to bring them down and while I'm doing this, I do want to tell you, I am working off of the Ultimate Bead Board today by the Bead Wrangler. You can find her on Etsy. She is amazing. Love, love, love Rhee and her boards. So, I have all 28 beads here. I've got just a small, what, maybe three inch tail thread here. And I'm going to take my needle and I'm going to go back through all these beads again. Sometimes you can get them all with one go. Sometimes you can't. But just do what you can do. So we go through all of them again. And if you, okay, so, so many people when they do this, they're like, well, I'm pulling it and it's not a circle like you say it is. You have to put both of your threads together and then pull. And that will pull them into a circle, okay? Once they get pulled into a circle, then we are going to tie these two threads together. So you wanna be careful just to make sure you don't get anything caught there in that knot that you are making. So when you get done with this step, this is what your piece will look like. So if we're following along with the pattern, step two says that we are gonna go through one bead next to the knot. So at this point, I can either go to the right or to the left, it does not matter, but whichever direction you start, you have to continue in that direction. So I'm just gonna go through this one bead here to the right of my knot. Now, I'm gonna thread on one 11, one three millimeter, and one 11. Okay, I'm gonna go back through the bead that my thread is exiting to make a circle. So I'm coming out of this bead. My thread is coming through the top of that bead. So I'm gonna come right back through that same bead to make a circle. So that when you do that, this is what your piece will look like. It'll almost look like that three millimeter is too large is what it will almost look like for what you're doing. Okay, so the next step, go through 111 that you just added in the previous step. So I'm gonna go through that first 11 that I added, just like this. So I'm coming out of a, what I'm gonna call a, con a connecting 11-0, okay? So this is my 11-0, it's gonna become what I call my connecting 11-0. So now I'm gonna thread on a three millimeter and one size 11 seed bead. All right, skip one bead on the base and take your needle through the next 11 on the base going back towards the completed beadwork. So I am skipping the very next 11 and I'm gonna come through the next 11 coming back towards the beadwork that I already have completed. So I'm going right back towards the beads here. So when I do that, now this is what my piece will look like. 
my pattern says now to get number six, go through the connecting 11. So I'm gonna go through that 11 right there in the middle. So it's the 11 right above where my thread is exiting. So I'm gonna go through that 11, and then I'm gonna continue on through the three millimeter and my new connecting 11-0. So I'm gonna go through the three millimeter and my new 11-0 connecting bead. And you notice I put my fingers on these beads as I pull the thread. That just helps keep everything tight and looking good. Now I'm gonna skip 111 on the base. So I built my little box off of this 11. I'm going to skip 111 and I'm gonna come through the next 11, okay? And I'm just gonna go straight on through it this time. I'm gonna thread on 111 and a three millimeter. I'm gonna come back around to make a circle or a little right angle weave box. So I'm going to go through the connecting 11 here. Okay, so I'm coming right back down through it. And then I'm gonna go through that base 11 that I built this box off of, which is gonna be this bead here, and then through my new connecting 11-0. So I'm gonna go here and here. So you'll notice that the beads that we skip are kind of further down than the beads that we went through, and that's exactly what you want it to do. So now I'm going to continue on doing these steps until I have seven beads here. So I'm coming out of the connecting bead. I pick up a three millimeter and an 11. I'm going to skip an 11 on the base, which is going to be this one. And I'm going to come through the next 11. Okay, I'm gonna go through the connecting 11-0 through the three millimeter. And again, I'm gonna put my fingers on it as I pull through my con new connecting 11-0. And then I skip an 11-0 on the base and go through the next 11-0. So this time I pick up an 11-0 and a three millimeter. I gotta make that little circle. So I'm gonna come through the connecting 11-0 and the base 11-0. So I'm gonna go through one and two. Pull this through. And then I'm gonna go up through that connecting 11-0. Okay, so that gives us two, four, five. So now I pick up a three millimeter and an 11-0. I skip an 11-0 and I come through the next 11-0 and I'm coming back towards the beadwork I already have there. I go up through the connecting 11-0 through the three millimeter, my new connecting 11-0, and then this is where we skip an 11-0 and we go through the next 11-0. Okay. So I've got two, four, six. I need one more set here, so it's a this time it's an 11-0 and a three millimeter. Remember, I've got to come back around. So I'm going to come through the connecting 11-0 here. Through the 11-0 on the base. And then through that new connecting 11-0. 
Okay, so if you're following along with me on the actual pattern, this is what um, you will be at at step 11, and this is what your piece should look like. Now, this is where we have to make the little point. So, if you look here, our points are a little bit different, and this is the part we're doing right now is this point. So, when we get to a point, we thread on a 3 millimeter, an 11, a 3 millimeter, and an 11. Now, we will not skip an 11 on the base this time. So we're gonna take our needle and we're gonna go through the very next 11 and I'm gonna come back through the 11 working towards back towards the completed beadwork. So again, on this point, we do not skip an 11 -0. We're gonna come right back through it and look at what that does. That gives me a funky little point here. So now I'm gonna go all through the beads I just added. And then again, I'm not gonna skip an 11. I'm gonna go through the very next 11 here on the base. So I go through the 11, the three millimeter, the 11, the three millimeter and the 11. and the very next 11. So again, I'm not skipping anything. I'm just going through the very next 11 there on the base. I'm gonna thread on an 11 and a three millimeter. And I'm gonna go back through that connecting 11 -0. So I'm gonna go through this 11 -0 here under the three millimeter. And that's a little bit harder to get through. Now I'm gonna go through the base 11-0 and my connecting 11-0, which is that new one that we just made. So now we're basically gonna go back to adding the beads like we are here. But before I do that, because it's gonna get in my way, I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna thread a new needle onto this little tail thread. And I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna stitch this tail thread through some beads to go ahead and get rid of it. And then I can go ahead and I can trim that short tail thread. So now that's out of my way and I do not have to worry about it whatsoever. So I'm coming out of the connecting bead. So this is where we pick up a three millimeter and an 11 and we skip an 11 -0 on the base. So I was working here. I skip one and I come through one and I'm coming back towards my completed beadwork just like this. Okay, pull it through. We're gonna go through the connecting bead through the three millimeter, through my new connecting bead And then, again, we are going to skip one on the base. So I was working here, I skip one, and I go through one. So we pick up an 11 -0 and a three millimeter. We're gonna come back around through our connecting 11 -0 here. Then we go through the base 11 -0, and then through our new connecting 11 -0. Okay. So I pick up a three millimeter and an 11. I skip an 11 on the base, which is gonna be this 11 here. And I'm gonna come back through the next 11, working back towards my beadwork. I'm gonna pull it through, go through my connecting 11, through the three millimeter, 
through my new connecting 11. And then I'm going to skip a bead on the base and go through the next 11 0 on the base. And I think, yeah, I got thread caught there. I was like, I know there's something not right here. All right. An 11 and a 3. I come back around and I go through that connecting 11 0. Then I go through the 11 0 on the base and my new connecting 11 0. Now a three millimeter and an 11. We skip an 11 on the base, come to my new 11 and I'm gonna come back through it just like this. We go through our connecting 11, through the three millimeter, through our new 11-0 connecting bead. And then again, we skip a bead on the base and go through the next 11 0. So when you do it, now you should have one, two, three, four, five, six. And I've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Okay. So this is what my piece should look like at this point. And now we are going to do one more little section here. And then we are going to be ready to go. So I pick up an 11 and a 3. I come through that connecting bead again. I come through the base bead that I was coming out of. And then through, <clears throat> excuse me, through my new 11 -0 connecting bead. So this is what your piece should look like so far. I'm gonna thread on a three millimeter, an 11, and a three millimeter. So this changes our count up just a little. So my thread is coming out here, and I'm gonna take my needle, and I'm just gonna come down through that adjacent 11-0. Now I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna go through this 11-0 on the base to finish out this specific little right angle weave box that I've made. So that now we have our double pointed little component. Now we've got one more thing that we need to do here. So I'm going to come around, I'm gonna go through the 11 and my three millimeter then through the 11 in the point, and then through the 11 and the next 11. So here at the point, I'm going through, oh, three millimeters, not 11s. I'm going through two three millimeters straight next to each other. Sorry, I think I said 11s just a minute ago. So that now those two are kind of connected by that one thread. Now we're gonna add in some embellishments. So we are gonna pick up an 11 and go through the next three millimeter. Okay, and you see what it does there? So then we pick up an 11 and go through. And we're gonna work along this side, just picking up an 11 and going through the next three millimeter. This is really going to give our piece some structure and some body. Now, once I've got, let me count them here. One, two, three, let's see. One, two, three, four, five, six. So once I've added six of my 11s here, when I come out of the three millimeter, I'm going to go through the next three millimeter, 11, and two, three millimeters. So 11 or I'm sorry, three millimeter and 11. Okay. And then 
two three millimeters. So one and two. Okay, so you'll notice at the points here and here, we're not putting any 11s at these points. So now we're gonna go through and we're gonna put on an 11 and go through the next three. And I'm gonna work down doing exactly what I'm doing here. So that once I get around and I put in this last size 11 seed bead here, I'm going to go through two, three millimeters here on this side to finish up this oval component. Now we need to tie this off. So I'm going to go through a few beads here along the outer edge. And then I'm going to go under the thread here between an 11 and a 3 millimeter. Leave myself a little loop. Go through that loop and pull that thread. So I put a little half hitch knot right there. I will thread through a couple of beads. And then once I've done this step, then I'm going to cut my string. So you want to make four more of these components because we have to have five, one, two, three, four, five to go around our piece. So you want to just go ahead and make four more components for a total of five. So once you have all five of your components made, then you're ready to start the construction of the ornament itself. So to start, we're gonna be working this top row of beads here, and then we are going to attach our oval components here to go around our piece. So to do that, I have my needle threaded with two yards of thread, and I'm gonna pick up one four millimeter, two 11s, one three millimeter, and two 11s, okay? I'm gonna do that for a total of five times. So this is one. So what you can do is you can go ahead and put four threes and four fours in a pile so you will know when you're ready to stop. So it's a four, two 11s, a three, and two 11s. Four, two 11s, a three, two 11s, a four, two 11s, a three, two 11s, and then last one, a four, two 11s, a three, and two 11s. Okay, so you should have five total sets. So one, two, three, four, and five. So I'm going to drop these down. And I'm going to go through all these beads again. Now, you won't be able to get through all of these at one time, and that's okay. Just go through what you can get through, and then go through the rest. So I'm just going to go through Make sure you don't skip any beads as you're going through. You can see here, I'm just gonna keep hanging on to that short tail thread I've got. Until I get back up here to the top. And now I'm going to tie these two threads together. Now, before I tie them together, they need to go on top of my ornament. So if they won't, your beads won't go over the hanging part, you can pop this off, slide your ring of beads on there, 
And then what you do is you squeeze these two pieces together and they go back into the top of the ornament and then you can fasten it back down just like this. It's easier to work on the ornament than it is off, but if you don't have any sort of way that you can hang, you can definitely work these first few strands flat. Okay, so I have my beads on here. If I want to, I can go ahead and I can get rid of this short tail thread. And sometimes that's easier said than done. There we go. Okay. So, thread is on. Thread is good to go. So, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go through the 4 millimeter right here next to my knot. And let me go ahead and see if I can re... There we go. Okay, so I'm going through this four millimeter next to the knot, and I'm gonna thread on seven size 11 seed beads. So one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. So seven 11s, and I'm gonna go back through the same bead that I'm coming out of to make a circle. Now, I'm going to go through four of these beads that I just added. So, one, two, three, and four. And I'm going to pull this through. Okay. Now, I'm going to thread on one eleven, one bugle bead, one eleven one bugle bead, and one 11. Okay, so an 11, a bugle, an 11, a bugle, and an 11. Okay, I'm gonna let these kind of all fall down here. And I'm gonna take my first component, and I'm gonna go through the point bead of that component. It doesn't matter which point I go through, I'm just gonna go through a point bead here. Now, I'm gonna thread on an 11, a bugle, and an 11. Now, I'm gonna bring all of this down. And this first one that I do, oh, sorry guys, I think I told you the wrong count there. I did. Let me back up here. Okay, so the easiest thing to do when you make a mistake, like I just did here, take your needle off and pull out where you need to be. Okay. And then just thread, thread your needle back on. That's the easiest way to fix a mistake instead of trying to go back through everything. So what I actually have left here on my needle is I have an 11 and a bugle. Okay, so it should have been an 11, a bugle, three 11s, a bugle, and an 11. Okay, so again, sorry about the mix up, but it should have been an 11, a bugle, three 11s, a bugle, and an 11. Then this is where I'm gonna grab the top point here of one of my components. And then I'm gonna thread on an 11, a bugle, and an 11. Okay, now, what I'm gonna do at this point is I'm going to come in, I'm gonna come up here and I'm gonna go through this middle 11 of my set of three. So I'm just gonna kinda of hold everything in place and pull. And when you pull it, 
you want these bugles to go side by side, just like they are here. Okay. Now, an 11, a bugle, and an 11. And I'm going to go back through this 11 up here that I started with. And you see, I'm going to go back this way. My thread is coming out here on the left. So I'm going to go back through that bead going from right to left. And I'm going to put my thumb on there and I'm going to pull this thread through. So that now this is what your piece should look like. So I'm going to continue through all the way around and I'm going to come all the way back down to where I'm coming out of this bead here at the bottom. So again, I'm going to go through the 11s. You can do this and come all the way up around and back down or you can just come back down through these beads. Either way will work. So I'm gonna just, from where I'm at here, I'm just gonna continue on through the 11, the bugle and the 11, then down through this middle 11 here, through the 11, the bugle and the 11, and it doesn't matter which side I go through. Then I'm going to go through the 11 point bead, and then I'm going to turn it around here because now I'm going to go through all these beads along the edge to come out of this bead here at the bottom. This is why I said you definitely do not want to go above a six pound fire line and you wanted to use that size 12 beading needle. All right, so I am coming out of my point bead here. And now we're ready to add this bottom part. So to add the bottom part is not too bad. We are gonna thread on an 11, a bugle, three 11s, one bugle, five elevens, one three millimeter, and three elevens. Okay, so we're going to let all of these drop down. So again, this is what we've got here. Okay, I'm going to go back through the fourth 11 above the three millimeter. So I'm going to go one, two, three, four, and I'm going to go back down through that bead. Okay, and I'm going to hold it in place as I pull the thread. And so what happens is when you pull it tight, you have almost like a triangle of beads here, just like this. Okay, so this puts us all the way up to step 38 on the pattern. So step 39 is thread on an 11, a bugle, and an 11. Go through the middle 11 of the set of three. So my set of three here, I'm gonna come right through that middle 11. And again, I'm gonna put my finger on it and I'm gonna pull it. Okay. And I can kind of hold on to my little three millimeter here at the bottom and pull that thread nice and tight. 
Then thread on an 11, a bugle, and an 11. And we're gonna go through the point 11 of my component. So you see here, my thread is coming out originally here on this right side. So I'm gonna take my needle and I'm gonna go through that 11 going left to right so that it finishes out the connection there. Okay, just like this. Now I'm going to go all the way, stitch all the way back up to come out of the next four millimeter here on this side. All right, so I have stitched all the way back up through my piece to where I'm exiting the next four millimeter. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna repeat the steps I just showed you to add an embellishment over four more of my four millimeters. Now on the last repeat, when I'm all the way over here, I'm going to, once I add this little section, I'm going to exit out of the three millimeter at the bottom of that section, okay? So go ahead and repeat these steps four more times to make your embellishment. Okay, so once you have all five of your embellishments done, this is what your piece will look like. So none of them are connected at this point. So now I am coming out of the last embellishment and I'm coming out here at the bottom of the three millimeter. So what I'm gonna do is I wanna make sure that all of my little embellishments, that nothing has gotten flipped, and I'm basically gonna hold on to the first one and the one right next to it. I'm going to set this over to the side because what we're doing now is we're working on this, we're gonna work on this bottom and connect all the pieces together. So I'm gonna thread on four 11s. one four millimeter and four 11. So especially if you're using my Yuki, this is where you may have to alter your counts a little bit. I'm coming out of the three millimeters. I'm gonna come to the next three millimeter and I'm going to go through that bead and pull. Okay, I'm gonna go to the next little embellishment here. Make sure nothing is flipped on it. It's all nice and straight. Four 11s one four millimeter and four 11s. Again, I'm going to go through the three millimeter here at the bottom. Okay, go to the next embellishment, make sure that it is straight where I need it. Four 11s, one four millimeter and four 11s. Go through the next three millimeter. Okay. Find your next embellishment. Again, make sure it's straight and nothing has gotten flipped on it. Four 11s, a four millimeter and four 11s. Go through the three millimeter here. Okay, so then the only one I have left is this first one because I've connected all the others. So it's four 11s, a four millimeter, and four 11s. And I'm gonna go through that first three millimeter that I started with again. So that now, I have a ring full of beads. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go through all these beads again. I'm not gonna add anything. I'm just gonna pull the thread tight as I go so that everything kind of pulls together and I'm gonna tie this thread off and get rid of this thread so that I can start a new thread. Before you do that, make sure all of your embellishments are correct and nothing has flipped and you are set to reinforce and tie this off. 
Okay, so I have gone through and I've reinforced my beads again, and you'll see how they're pulled together. Now, I know somebody at home is freaking out because they're like, oh my gosh, it's not a circle. It's, it looks like it's five-sided. Once we actually get our other embellishments attached to those four millimeters, you will have a circle, okay? So don't, don't flip out and freak out on me about that. Now, to tie the thread off, because I know someone's gonna ask, once I've reinforced, I'm coming out of a three millimeter. I'm going to do a half inch knot. So I'm going to take my needle right behind the thread between a three millimeter and an 11. And then I'm going to leave a little loop, stick the needle through the loop, and voila, a half hitch knot. And I'm going to do a couple of those. And then before I tie the thread off, I'm going to stitch up through some of my embellishments here, and then I will trim this thread. Okay, and so this is what we've got so far. Now we are going to thread on two more yards onto our needle and start a new thread. Okay, so I have my needle threaded with a whole new piece of fire line. And what I wanna do is I wanna pick anywhere here around the top and I'm gonna take my needle and I'm going to just go behind the thread here between an 11 and a four millimeter. I'm gonna pull it through. See right there, it's right between those beads. And I'm going to just tie this together. And when I pull the knot, I make sure this is gonna go between two 11s and that's fine. Okay, and I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna do it again. Okay, now I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna get rid of this short tail thread. So I'm just going to put that through and I'm gonna go through some beads here. I want to just get rid of this tail thread. Now, I'm going to thread my needle here. Or it, nope, it's threaded. It's good to go. Woohoo! Okay, so thread is coming out here. So I'm going to go through the 11 and the 4 millimeter. Okay. Now I'm going to come down, well, let me see. No, actually, I'm gonna back up. I'm, because of where I'm coming out, I am not gonna go through the four millimeter. I'm going to go down through the three elevens and then that fourth one, which is gonna be the connector, I guess I would call it 11, that little middle one here. And then on this right side, I'm going to go through the 11 and the bugle and the 11. Okay, so I'm going to go down through those three beads there. Okay, so now what we're going to do is we are going to add an arch from piece to piece here at the top. So, to do that, I'm going to thread on 10 11s. Okay, so I've got 10 11s, a 4 millimeter, and 10 11s. Okay, so from where I'm coming out here, I'm gonna come across over here and I'm gonna go through the 11, the bugle, and the 11. And you'll notice I'm going up through those beads. So when you pull, that's what it's gonna look like, okay? Now go through the 11 here at the top And then down through the 11, the bugle, 
and the 11. Now, again, it's 10, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. So, 10 11s of 4 millimeter and 10 11s. Now, if you want to, on these four millimeters that you're adding, you can also use a bicone. So if you wanted a pretty four millimeter bicone, you could do that as well. So I'm here, I'm gonna come across over here, and I'm gonna go through the 11, the bugle, and the 11. Okay. So that's gonna make my next drape. So then I'll go through the 11, then the 11, the bugle and the 11, and then I will be ready to do my next drape. So I'm gonna continue doing this three more times so that I can have a drape in between each. Now, once I get this last drape done, I'm going to continue on to come out of this first four millimeter that I added on this first drape. So once you finish your little drapes or your swags, this is what your piece will look like. So once I finish the last little drape here, I come around to come out of the first four millimeter that I added on my drapes or my swags. So the first step from this point is we are gonna pick up six 11s. My thread is coming out to the right, so I'm gonna take my needle and I'm gonna go right back through that bead again so that it makes a circle. Okay, so we have a little circle of beads here now. So I'm gonna go through three of those 11s I'm going to kind of hold them in place as I pull the thread straight down like this. All right, now here we go. We got a lot of beads to pick up, so bear with me. We're going to pick up an 11, a bugle, an 11, a three millimeter, an 11, a bugle, an 11, a four millimeter. 11, a bugle, 11, three millimeter, 11, bugle, and four 11s. Okay, so again, let me pull it up here so you can see that count of beads again that I'm gonna do. All right, now, from where you're at, we are gonna come straight down below and we are gonna go through this four millimeter here at the bottom, directly opposite our swag. Now we pick up two 11s and we are gonna go through the second 11 under the bugle bead. Okay, so through this bead here and just pull that thread straight up like this. Now we pick up an 11, a bugle, and an 11, and we're gonna go through the three millimeter here. So I'm skipping an 11, a bugle, and 11, and I'm going through just the three millimeter. Okay, and I'm gonna pull it through. Now I'm gonna pick up an 11, a bugle, and an 11, and I'm gonna go through the four millimeter. An 11, a bugle, and an 11. And I'll go through the three millimeter up here. Now an 11, a bugle, and an 11. And this time, I'm going to go through these three 11s. So, originally, I came through these. Now, I'm going through these to finish out my piece. So, now, I'm going to go through the four millimeter. 
and I'm going to come back down through and I'm going to work through the beads here on the right. So I'll go through four 11s. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, May not be able to get through the four at one time, but you can go through three and then 11, bugle 11. Now, when you come out of that 11, we are going to pick up three 11s, skip the three millimeter, and go through the 11, the bugle, and the 11. Now, three 11s. Skip the four and go through the 11, the bugle, and the 11. Now three 11s. Skip the three and go through the 11, the bugle, and the 11. So now I'm going to go down through this 11 through the two 11s on this right side. Through the four millimeter. Through the two 11s on this side. Through that middle 11. And then through the 11 the bugle, and the 11. Now, this time I'm going to be working on the left-hand side. Okay, so when we add three 11s here to these three millimeters, if you don't like kind of the point it gives you, you can drop down to two, okay? You can do two 11s. Completely up to you and what you want to do. So now I do three 11s. I skip the three and I go through the 11, the bugle, and the 11 again on this left hand side. Three 11s. Skip the four millimeter and go through the 11, the bugle, and the 11. Three 11s. Skip the three millimeter and go through the 11 the bugle, and the 11, and if you can get through the three 11s there, you can do that as well. Okay, so now you see the difference there in adding those embellishments. So now I'm gonna go through the four millimeter again, through the 10 11s here of my swag, Through the 11, the bugle, and the 11. Through the 11 here in the middle. Through the 11, the bugle, the 11. And then through 10 11s. and a four millimeter. Okay. So that's gonna get me into position on the next swag to add my embellishment. So I'm gonna go around and do this four more times to finish out the um, embellishments in between. So once you have all your little drapes finished and you've got your embellishments done, then your ornament is now complete and you can tie off the thread. So you can see how different the ball looks just from using a shiny versus a matte bead and using a colored seed bead versus a nickel colored bead. So this is the Christmas past ornament. So guys, I hope you enjoyed learning how to make these beautiful new Christmas night ornaments. It's a lot of fun. It just takes you a little while to make.
Remember, you can get the pattern completely for free on my website at offthebeadedpathbeadstore.com. I also sell all the materials that you would need to make these beautiful new Christmas ornaments. Now, because I know somebody's going to ask, I'll go ahead and let you know the earrings I have on today are from my 3D Peyote 3D Shapes series here on YouTube. They're just two pieces interconnected together. My pendant I have on today is made by my friend Heather at Beach Beads in Surfside, South Carolina. And my bracelet is the Marilyn Monroe bracelet. I just did it in two colors in that checkerboard pattern. So guys, thank you so much for watching. And I hope you'll come back next week for another new video. Bye-bye.